How are you doing guys, it's Philip McKernan and today I want to talk about the notion of settling in an aspect of your life and uh, quite often when I talk about this area people get very defensive and they make natural assumptions um, like I'm not settling in an area of my life which basically means they close the door to the notion that they may be, they're just unaware of it. So I'd like you to almost approach this as you are settling, like almost kind of resign yourself to the fact that you are settling for an aspect that doesn't serve you in one area of your life. Just, 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 just play with this for a moment. And because I think when you approach it like that, I think you're open to it. If, if you say to yourself that, no, 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 I don't, I don't settle in life, I don't settle in life, well then, you know, really the lesson is never going to be learned. So again, the awareness is only available to us when we can open to the possibility of the conversation, essentially. So I break it down into three kind of key areas or three elements as I call it. Work, the work that we do, self relationship with ourselves, self worth, uh, confidence, you know, internal clarity, whatever it happens to be, and others, every external relationship, whether it's your partner, whether it's people that you hang out with, whether it's people you communicate with or family, etc. So if you consider each of those areas, I'd like you to sit down for a moment and just again approach this that you are settling in an aspect of your life. So within each of those elements, there's an area or a relationship or an aspect of your work or something that you're probably settling at. And the reason that we do that is that we have, all of us in this earth as we walk around, we have different levels of self-worth, okay? And it varies. It varies depending on the mood that we're in, the location that we're living in and so on and so forth. Like there's no doubt in the morning when you wake up and it's a beautiful summer's day, everybody feels a little bit better about themselves and the world in general. And you don't get as much road rage on the road, for example. And it's just a silly little example. But in essence, I've never met a human being, including myself, that doesn't suffer from a lack of self-esteem at some level and it kind of it, it shows up on their lives so if you're sitting there and you're in a job that just drives you crazy it's a crappy job that just drives you absolutely nuts but you're going through the motions the reason you stay is not because you don't have the clarity of what's next the reason you stay is because you feel that's what you deserve now a lot of people freak out when I say this and they get really aggressive and annoyed and everything else. It's easy for you to say that and everything else. I need to pay my mortgage. That aside, you stay because you feel that's what you deserve. You stay in a relationship that is not serving you or you stay in a relationship and you don't try to fix it or you don't try to sort it out or you don't take it head on to try and shift the situation to serve you better and you have a relationship with yourself, beating yourself up, blaming yourself. You may not be one of these people walking the earth blaming the government and blaming everybody else. You go, oh, I take full responsibility. There's a difference between responsibility and beating the crap out of yourself. So, you know, I, I, this is like, try and, try and look at this as a bit of fun, okay? I know that some of my videos can be kind of very heavy and full on and, and they can be almost kind of undermining but again I think I shine a light on the things that a lot of us just don't want to talk about or look upon and everything else. Example is um, you know I love doing live experiences, I love doing live workshop, live weekends, it's just what I love to do okay. Video is great, audio is you know great whatever but I just love live experiences. And we just put out an email recently because I wanted to spend a full day talking to people about money because our dysfunctionality with money and the control that money has on us is extraordinary. It, actually more so than I ever realized until I started to step in. And the funny thing is most of the people that thought they had a healthy relationship with money or that money wasn't an issue or it didn't hold them back or it didn't hold them down or didn't control them are the very ones that actually created awareness and understanding around money through the conversation, through the workshop, about how dysfunctional or how much money has a control on them or how unaware they are of that, of that case. The, the reason I'm bringing this up is that I put out a date uh, for Toronto, put out a date for Calgary, and we had the single worst, the single worst response we've ever had to a live event, period, ever. I mean, horrendous. And, you know, obviously bruised the old ego uh, for, for a little bit, but then I stopped back and I said, okay, so people just maybe just don't want to talk about this. They don't want to talk about it, which is fine, it's their prerogative. But I think a lot of people are not talking about the things that can truly serve them. It's easier to talk about goal setting, it's easier to talk about the future, it's easier to sit there and go, it'll be fine, but sometimes it won't. So my encouragement to you is to consider this as a bit of fun, to sit back with a pen and paper, write out those areas, work, self, others, and ask yourself very simply, 
Don't blind yourself. Don't try and justify that you're not. But where, not am I, where am I settling in each of those areas? Where am I settling in each of those areas? Don't judge it. Just identify it. Then what you do is you have then two parts to the follow-up to that. The part one is you basically have a conversation. Conversations we think about more often than not as a conversation with an external partner, with somebody, with some person, with a group. The first conversation starts here, okay? The first conversation starts at home. Bit weird, talking to yourself and everything else. I do it all the time. I'm kind of doing it to a camera right now. But what I mean by that is to step in and have that conversation. I start to dig in, well, why am I settling there? What am I afraid of? And so on and so forth. For example, I met a client recently and he, he just, it, it, sometimes people find it difficult to describe what it is I do because it's so personal for everybody. And what he described my work best was that he said, when I came to you, it became very apparent that I was a people pleaser. It was something that I had carried all of my life is adult life and from, from, a, from a fairly early age in life. And he said, I'd read books, I'd try to identify what, what that was about. And you're the first person that said, why? Why are you a people pleaser? Why? Why do you do that? Why do you feel the necessity to make sure everybody's happy? Particularly at home with his wife and so on and so forth. Now, that can be a lovely trait. And we think about that as, oh, it's not kind of nice, puts himself first. No, it's actually, it can be detrimental to yourself, your own sanity and your relationship. Because what you do by putting people first all of the time is you put them first, because, but you, you compromise your core values sometimes. You compromise what you fundamentally believe just to keep that person happy. And when he dug into the why, we tracked it back to the fact that he came from a broken home. And somewhere in his subconscious, he said, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to repeat history. I'm not going to allow that to do, you know, to kind of transcend into my relationship. And, and his, his, defense, his defense mechanism, his way of dealing with that was, that, well, if I, if, I, if I give everybody what they need, well, then I'll prevent that. But the reality is that was actually the opposite. The very thing that he was trying to prevent was, in some respects, we could argue he was moving towards. So that's an example of, of asking the question in the conversation, why am I settling in this area? Sometimes we're afraid to take on a conversation at work because we're afraid of upsetting somebody. If we're a business owner, we're afraid of upsetting somebody that they may leave. Why? Understand the why. And that is a conversation, whether it's in writing, whether it's just internally in your mind, whether you speak it out loud, whatever. Conversation with yourself is extremely important. And then following that, it may require, may, notice I say may require an external conversation with that person. But the conversation with that person before you sit with yourself and the conversation after you sit with yourself are going to look, sound, and feel completely differently. Because one is, I realize I'm settling with you, and you know what, I'm not going to put up any more of your bullshit. That's here. If you take the time to identify where you're settling, understand why you're settling, you might attract and step in. I'm just using as an external example, like a, a relationship. You might enter that conversation with, you know what, I'm not particularly happy with... Um, our relationship the way it is and just making this up and you know what I feel that a lot of it's me I, I, I kind of I compromise and I and I don't say what's on my mind and that's not all your fault but I just I really want you to sit down and listen to some things I've got to say so one is very attacking blaming the person the other one is actually your self-awareness into that conversation and it basically supports a platform for you can kind of work it through with that person so sit down, work self, others. Where are you compromising? Not are you, where are you compromising? Are settling in life? And then you have a conversation with yourself. That is a conversation. So to continue that conversation with yourself. And then the invitation is, if it makes sense, and only if it makes sense to you, is to bring that conversation out. And with the newfound awareness, I guarantee you, you'll approach the conversation externally different than you would have before. But settling in life is, is something that many if not every single human i've ever met does every single one and we do it for all sorts of reasons and we can justify why we do it but at the end of the day it holds us back it holds us down it holds us back it just puts the brakes on a little bit and we don't need to do that so it comes from a core self-worth issue but at least i'm giving you something at least i hope i'm giving you something a little bit more surface to deal with that you can do now in a few moments over the next few hours, over a glass of wine or sitting in front of the fire.
Thank you.